up for evidence and rationality in hostile environments, and sometimes at great danger to themselves and their careers. What are the rational evidence-based metrics that we as a jury could use to distinguish between them? But it also wasn't easy because of the many controversial topics involved, from transgender participation in sports to the origins of the COVID-19 virus. It's not the job of evidence to have a view, but we may have views about the evidence. Sometimes science can sometimes stroke controversy and contribute to polarization, and it's often difficult to distinguish objective evidence, an objective evidence-based view from our subjective reaction to it. In those cases, it's the job of scientists to stand firm and as, object as objectively as they can to present the evidence that can inform reasoned debate. And that is what the Maddox Prize is all about. I think what united us as a judging panel around the eventual winner was how, how it told a different story to that story of polarization about the use of evidence to bring together two sides in a combustible situation where those sides would otherwise have been implacably opposed. The Niger Delta is West Africa's largest oil producing region. One result, as has been extensively reported, has been significant contamination caused by spill, spills by oil, co oil companies, decay in infrastructure, damage from people breaking pipes to take oil, illegal refining activities, all at huge cost to the health and well-being of surrounding communities. This is an environment in which local communities and oil companies often find themselves in dispute. Disputes that can easily escalate into violent confrontation in areas where guns are common. Scientists have earned suspicion because of previous occasions where local communities have seen researchers come and go with no meaningful benefit to their community. At the same time, oil companies have seen scientists as a threat to their bottom line, questioning their activities in that area. This year's winner of the John Maddox Prize is a biochemist, soil scientist, and toxicologist at the University of Port Harcourt in Nigeria, who has played an active role in assisting the process of decontamination using phytoremediation techniques to find nature-based solutions to oil contamination. She has had the courage to enter this environment as a single woman, combating suspicion and intimidation that has seen her abused, threatened, detained without cause, and her equipment confiscated, all the while being told that this was no place for her as a woman that women should follow not lead. It has been an uphill battle, but by developing strong relationships and winning the trust of both sides involving them in the design and implementation of research, showing the true causes of contamination and what can be done to combat it, she has played a central part in bettering the lives and ensuring a more harmonious existence for people living in the Niger Delta, a true case of science being used for the common good. For these reasons, it is my very great pleasure to award this year's John Maddox Prize to Eukarya Oluji Nwaiji.
what do I say? Thank you <laughs> to Sensible Science. Thank you, Nature. I'm really highly honored right now for being selected as 2022 winner of Job Meadows Prize. Um, I got this news when I arrived from South Africa last month that I've been selected. I just got down from the plane after receiving a regional award in South Africa as evidence producer. And then I got this notification. I was so elated. I've been bottling good stuff. I was warned in the letter this remains confidential until today. So you can imagine, ladies and gentlemen, you have good news within you, but you can say it out. <laughs> That's the biggest challenge of this award. But I can tell you, <laughs> but I can tell you my steps changed when I got this notice. So I walked with my heads up and I couldn't see myself like the regular scientist. I had all the people who abused me because of my science, because of working with local communities, providing research evidence to push forward their cause, to see that the lost diversity that has eroded the sustainability we find in the ecosystem comes back and provide the livelihood of the people. And I get insulted, I get abused, I get battered for all of these causes. Now I am emboldened to do more as I go back to Nigeria. I confront a lot of issues. My grandmother said, we dance around the circle and suppose, but the secret lies in the middle and moves. Now when I have seen the team of judges today, who have sat on my case, they know the secret, they know. They are in the middle and they know the secret. So now is a confirmation, is an approval that what we are doing is good. And I see all of you beautiful people gathered this evening only to meet me, only to celebrate me, only to rejoice with me. How happy can I be today? I must say I'm grateful to all of you. I must acknowledge the support of my Vice Chancellor, who couldn't come here today, Professor Wunari Jadu, who sends his goodwill message to this August gathering in October. <laughs> <laughs> I want to appreciate all those who have been fanning me into flames. My former Vice Chancellor, Professor Jenka, Professor Ndowa Lale, Professor Ayelog Late, Professor Anosike Late. These are the people, Professor. Nimi Dickens. These are the people who pushed me, who said, go, never look back. Never look back. They want to stop you. No stopping you. You carry you out unstoppable. Go. And that I have continued to do. I am well known by the local people who appreciate what we do as scientists. Science has been suffering that a gap cannot be crossed between the, the community and the researchers. But now I try to, to close up the gap. And now they can understand what I do. I tell my stories in simpler language. I have brought the industry and the agencies of government in the same room talking about our science. I'm happy today that I can say I've been emboldened by the international community. So I can't be happier. I can't be more grateful. Congrats to me. I thank you to all of you.
uh, to do that. Um, and she said to me, luckily at that time she didn't have a husband because he probably would have stopped her. Um, but, uh, so she's done some really amazing, intrepid things by, uh, by getting people together to agree that they need to ask the same question even if they disagree about what to do with the answers. And I think that's, um, for me, a really inspiring thing uh, you can be able to look at in relation to so many other subjects and debates. Um, and I'm sure that that's going to rest with everybody here. So it finally remains for me to say um, a, a huge toast to you uh, and to everyone who's held this moment. And also, I need to take a moment to say um, to toast those people not present um, for a variety of reasons, including, of course, the late John Maddox, whose, whose name is Silas Pye. Um, and I remind you finally, there's two things we're going to do. One is to uh, tweet and to do whatever other groovy thing you might do, uh, <laughs> Instaface or whatever it's called. Um, send that out too. Uh, but please start telling the world about these kinds of stories because that's how we start this. And I remind you again of Bam Bang Hero Sahaja, whose who's wife uh, worried that he would come home every night. And the first thing he said on receiving the prize is that if he went missing, more people would notice. Um, and I think understanding that the first thing we do is recognise what people have done and achieved um, and celebrate them is a small step that we can take. So please take your first step in doing that tonight. And the second thing that you can do, of course, is to raise a glass to the carrier and to the John Lennon's Prize. Cheers. <laughs> Congrats. Congratulations.